Hey guys, today we will be talking about decentralized exchanges. A lot of them have recently popped up, such as Uniswap, SushiSwap, Curve, uh, Balancer, HoneySwap, even Sun. And for each platform, there's like such as Tron, there would be a different one. And we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of how the liquidity pool works. And soon I'll be going over some of the websites that I love to participate. You guys may remember EtherDelta. And there was a fundamental problem with Ether Delta. Even if it was a decentralized exchange, there was never enough liquidity and the spreads were really high. So if there, some new token came out at a particular time, there would never be a, a buyer or a seller. And there were often frequently high spreads. And this made the whole platform unusable and people would still flock to Binance, for example, rather than using Ether Delta, which would be a decentralized exchange. So a lot of these newer decentralized exchanges, such as Uniswap, found an interesting way around this problem, and that is using liquidity pools. So a liquidity pool is exactly what its name implies. It, uh, it incentivizes people to create liquidity in a particular exchange, in this case, the decentralized exchange. In a liquidity pool, for example, if one Ether is worth 100 DAI, if you want to participate, you would put equal amounts of both. So you would put hundred dollars worth of ether and you put hundred dollars worth of dye now if a buyer comes along and wants to buy one ether from you the number of ethereum in the pool will be decreased from thousand to 999 for example and that means the number of dye in the pool would be increased by hundred dollars so this this the reason because of this is because we have to ensure there's a constant maintain that is K in this example. So the number of Ethereum into the number of DAI should equal to the constant. And the price of Ethereum will be then determined by the number of DAI in the pool divided by the number of Ethereum. And you can see that you would have to pay premium. So basically, if you buy Ethereum and you sell DAI back to the liquidity pool, the price of Ethereum will go up. And that's how markets are created using this formula. If the number of Ethereum the buyer wants to buy increases to say 10, in order to maintain the constant, the price of the Ethereum has to go up. When you want to buy 100 Ethereum, that you would have to pay a lot more premium instead. You would have to pay about 23%. So now the price of Ethereum in that exchange is relatively high, whereas maybe the price of Ethereum outside is not that high as in this decentralized exchange. And that's where arbitrageurs will come in. They will come in and then they, till they fill the arbitrage, it, it, the price will be back to the market price after that. Uh, here in Uniswap, uh, you can see that I've tried different values and I'm seeing that uh, different values of Ethereum uh, has a price premium. And over here for Ethereum to a wrapped tie, is about 4% and as I increase the number of Ethereum, the price increases, the, the pr premium percentage increases. And this is probably because the liquidity would be less for this pair. And if I try some other pair, the liquidity value would be a bit different. Uh, some of the advantages of the liquidity pool is it incentivizes liquidity. So people are incentivized by, by being provided a fee. Uh, furthermore, it is extreme decentralization, which would mean that uh, it's better than having order books on Ether Delta. And lastly, because of the fact that you're incentivized a lot, the spread is very low. So for a moderate or a small size order, you would be able to fulfill it easily at a at a low cost. Now here's the disadvantages. So if you have a pair of maybe Ethereum and Bitcoin and Ethereum goes up 50% with relative to Bitcoin, you would actually have a small loss. And that loss could be lesser than the fees you might have gotten by the liquidity pool providers. However, that is something that you would need to calculate. And you can see in this graph that if the price changes five times, so Ethereum becomes maybe five times of what Bitcoin did, you would have a 25% loss. Now, only in very extreme situations, the loss that you incur would be more than the fees that you receive. So yes, there is a disadvantage. However, most of the times, given the market, it usually goes up together or down together. So 
So I've been using pools.fyi and cardmarketcap slash yield farming to get an idea of what is out there. And some of the things that are out there includes Uniswap and for Tron it's sun.io, for EOS it's defaultbox.io, for um, Neo there's Flamingo. There's a lot of options out there and it's basically you need to find pretty much on a daily basis or weekly, whatever suits you best on what explicitly you have, what are the tokens that you have that you can lend out and what is the pair that you have that you can lend out to get the gains that you want. And this opportunity might be there for a few more months. I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to take as much advantage of it as possible and I'm just sharing what I know. Thank you.